I'm talking today to Dr. Alon Barson. Dr. Barson is a UK ophthalmic surgeon. Thank you, Dr. Barson, for allowing me to interview you for Eskimos International Library of Interviews with Experts. Thank you, Joanne, and it's a real pleasure to be here with you today. Great to talk to you today, too. Dr. Barson, today we're talking about laser eye surgery, long-sightedness, short-sighted, and astigmatism. So let's start off with what is laser surgery and is it the same as refractive surgery? Well, refractive surgery is a, a broader term, and that really describes any kind of surgery to try and make it so that someone doesn't need to wear glasses. Uh, that surgery can be combined with treatment of disease, such as cataracts or corneal disease, um, in order so that after the surgery, the patient not only has the uh, the, the, not only is the disease being treated, but also they don't need to wear uh, glasses or contact lenses. Uh, laser eye surgery or laser vision correction is a, a subset, it's a component of refractive surgery, and that involves these days using two lasers uh, to reshape the cornea, which is the clear natural uh, watch crystal of the eye at the front of the eye, uh, in keeping with someone's prescription. Uh, so that after the surgery, they don't need to wear glasses or contact lenses. So what is the difference between somebody who's long-sighted and somebody who's short-sighted? Well, long-sighted means that the, uh, the eye will focus light behind the retina. The retina is the back of the eye. That's where light needs to be focused in order for someone to see clearly uh, without glasses or contact lenses. Um, in long-sightedness, that uh, light is, is focused behind the, uh, the, the retina. So for laser eye surgery, the cornea needs to be made more powerful. Um, in nearsightedness, um, which is more common, the light is focused in front of the eye, uh, sorry, in front of the retina, um, and the laser eye surgery is done in order to make the cornea less powerful and so that there's less focusing there, um, so that the focus then becomes focus sharply to a point on the retina. So if we're talking about people who are long-sighted and people who are short-sighted, uh, which people would make good candidates and would there be people who uh, would not be good candidates for laser eye surgery? Yes, that's right. There's a range of um, levels of short-sighted and far-sighted or near-sighted and far-sighted, which... Um, uh, w within which it's uh, advisable to treat. Uh, there are some laser eye surgeons out there who pride themselves on treating every single kind of prescription, um, but the reality is that for those of us who want to do laser eye surgery um, as a one-off thing, so that you do the surgery and a patient never needs to worry about uh, glasses again, then there are ranges of treatment where, um, it, it, where we say it's very reliable, very predictable, and it's more advisable to treat. So for near or short-sightedness, um, my personal limit is up to minus 10. If someone is more than minus 10, then there are other refractive procedures uh, advised, such as an implantable contact lens or an ICL, uh, which is a non-laser procedure that has benefits over laser vision correction when it's at that level of nearsightedness. Likewise, if someone is far-sighted or long-sighted, um, my limit is not to go above plus 4. Um, if they are more than plus 4, then, and you do laser, then there is a higher chance that they will require another laser procedure at some stage in the future. And I would rather not uh, expose them to a second operation um, if it's not necessary. So if someone is more than plus four, then I will offer that patient something called a refractive lens exchange, which is essentially the same as cataract surgery, just when a patient doesn't have a cataract. And I use a multifocal intraocular lens in that, in that circumstance so that they don't require uh, glasses for distant or for near. For anyone who and is, uh, is astigmatism. Astigmatism um, is where um, in, in one in one plane of the cornea, uh, light is focused uh, in front of the retina. Um, and well, sorry, there are different kinds of astigmatism. So there's there's nearsighted astigmatism, or there's far-sighted astigmatism, or there's mixed astigmatism. But essentially, in astigmatism, there are two focal points inside the eye. So for nearsighted astigmatism, 
those two focal points will both be in front of the retina, but at different points. Um, and for fast and for far-sighted astigmatism, um, both points of focus will be uh, behind the retina, but again at different points. Um, and again, uh, the laser is uh, very effective at treating astigmatism, um, but up to a certain point. And again, I don't like to treat more than four diopters of astigmatism with a laser, but there are other options. So there are minor surgical procedures that can be done to debulk or reduce the level of astigmatism to within four diopters so that the laser can correct the rest. So personally, I'm very comfortable treating um, astigmatism if it's less than four diopters. If it's more than four diopters, uh, then the patient will require more than one procedure. And that's all assuming that the astigmatism is regular, which means that the different focal points on the cornea, um, the different uh, refractive points on the cornea that correspond to those focal points are at 90 degrees to each other. If they're not at 90 degrees, then we call the astigmatism irregular. And at that point, we start to think about diseases such as keratoconus, which is a weakness of the cornea. And in those particular cases, laser vision surgery uh, is not indicated. And so a very thorough screening evaluation is required in all people before laser eye surgery in order to establish whether they, they will be safe, uh, safe candidates to have it done. With laser eye surgery, um, would it be safe a procedure to do on children? Is there a certain age where you would only start the procedure from? That's right. Um, I do not do laser vision correction on children because their eyes keep changing and their eyes are growing and their prescription is changing. So again, it comes down to the idea of doing the surgery once and it becoming a permanent, a permanent benefit to that patient. So my cutoff in terms of age is 18. Someone has to be above the age of 18. And if they're between the age of 18 and 21, I will look at them very, very closely indeed to make sure that there is no change in their prescription. Anyone over 21 can have laser vision correction. But again, it's important that the prescription is not changing. Um, once you get above the age of 21, it's less likely that the prescription will be changing. Between 18 and 21, it can change. But if it's been stable, it's not been changing for a year or more, then I'm comfortable to do the procedure on those people. In fact, there's something to be said for doing laser eye surgery on people when they're younger because they have many more years of benefit from having it had it done at that age. And are there any risks to laser eye surgery? Yes, there are risks to any kind of surgery. The risks of laser eye surgery are uh, very low indeed in terms of significant risks. So the risk is about 1 in 10,000 of the vision being significantly worse than it was before uh, due to a problem such as weakening of the cornea something we call ectasia. Um, there's a risk of about one in a thousand of a more minor problem, some dryness, um, some inflammation, mild infection, normally things that can be treated um, appropriately without patient coming to any kind of long-term uh, harm or problem. What I often say to patients uh, who are contact lens wearers is that the lifetime risk of wearing contact lenses is uh, similar or even some people believe greater than the one-off risk of a laser vision procedure. So it has become so safe that the risk of a problem is very rare indeed. And much as we don't avoid going on an aeroplane because there is a risk that the aeroplane will crash, um, the risk of a really severe problem for laser vision correction um, is, very, is very low as well, um, and not something that I think should stop a candidate who has been appropriately screened for safe surgery in the hands of a appropriately skilled and well-trained surgeon uh, undergoing the procedure. Thank you, Dr. Bison. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you, Joanne.